Hello? Hi everyone. Everyone coming through okay? Can you see me and hear me and all of that good stuff? Play some tapestry. Hi everyone that's here. Hey Stacey, Shannon, James, Jackpot, Michael. I'm coming through okay? Brilliant. So this is the the final, apparently, expansion for Tapestry of Fantasies and Futures. And it's adding more things to it. Like not not so big as the other ones in terms of scope. Like there's no new landmarks and things like that in here. There's a load of new civilizations to be, there's a load of new cities you can pick from, there's new technology cards, there's new tapestry cards and a new type of tapestry cards. So yeah, there's 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 plenty new to see. But it's a bit smaller than maybe some of the other things. And like it's it's a nice kind of environmentally friendly little package as well. It comes in like a little cardboard envelope and the things are kind of packaged up with like paper wrapping paper tape it's not really tape for the most part which is cool but yeah it's just gonna add more variety and a bit of a kind of fantasy twist to everything really shan you quit after the first expansion hope it doesn't convince you otherwise i think if you weren't on board with the first expansion i don't think it will because i think it's like it, it is doing cool new things but the the game itself is largely the same in the the last one the was it was plans and employees the second one I thought, was that the first expansion? But the, sec the second expansion added the new, like, added the new track, the arts track, and changed the science die and all of that kind of thing. So that was maybe the, the last bigger change. I love it as a solo game, but not so much multiplayer. I don't remember multiplayer as much now. We played the original game multiplayer. That's some different counts, but I've never played an expansion multiplayer i don't think anyway i really like it as a solo game but that's i think universally true of Automa factory games i think and oh, uh, it was just like watching <laughs> thanks james i think you've never played I, hope, I will go through like everything that i'm doing from scratch it's it's a it's pretty simple to get started really there is like depth and variety and iconography and stuff but generally yeah, you're doing simple things in your turns. I can play it at two and three, and ne but never solo. I'm going to play solo today. I hope I show it off well. Hey, Boris, get Skycroft. No, don't be super fond of it because the yeah the the tapestry cards and stuff like can be a big random factor, which might might be a big factor in the the multiplayer game really. But you may like then if if you're not a fan of the the randomness of things wait wait and see what our our civilization is going to be hey retro gamer was smitten packaged in a similar way yeah stonewire uh i've been very conscious of all of that stuff right so i think we're good to go hey everyone that's, that's like a, another intro hey super you want to advance on all the tracks but it's not a winning strategy last time i didn't watch the whole thing but i was watching the last stream where it got demolished at the end, I think the Automa was almost a hundred points ahead of me. Uh, and part of my problem was spreading too thin. I didn't get to the end of any of the tracks, trying to do too much of everything. I you know, wanted to go in the arts track a little bit, try and focus on something. Uh, and then once you get to the end of the track, it'll give you a really big reward that will help you in all the other tracks. But there we go. Like, I can't decide, like, I edited it down last time. Maybe I'll edit this one down again. So let's have a look. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do the start then. Hi everyone, I'm Tom. <laughs> We're going to be playing uh, Tapestry, Fantasies and Futures, the final expansion for Tapestry. And uh, yeah, I'm explaining everything from scratch. So if you haven't seen any of the other videos, then you shouldn't be too lost. But I've, I've done playthroughs now. I think there's there's a playthrough for every single one. So the base game and the, the two separate expansions. And uh, yeah, we're going to be playing against the Automa. Step down the difficulty a little bit from last time. Before we get started, uh, oh yeah, thank you so much, James, for linking the Patreon and the Kofi in the description. Hey, it's, it's in the chat and the description. If you'd like to support the channel, there are the ways that you can do that, and it's the reason that I'm able to be here playing games at all. So, in Tapestry, let's have a look at our civilization for a start. I have 
like you're, you're supposed to shuffle up all of the civilizations and the city cards and stuff and draw a couple and pick from them. I have, for the purposes of this playthrough, exclusively picked from the new civilizations and city-states from the new expansion. Everything else, so the expansion comes with new technology cards, new tapestry cards, and a new type of tapestry card. I wonder if I can show you that by just... Oh, the Amazing Dark Ages card that worked so well for us last time is on the bottom of the deck this time. Maybe there's more. Uh, there are charm cards in here. There's one. So the new type of tapestry card has got a reward here that will trigger when it's placed, when a card, when it's placed and a tapestry card is on its left, or there can be symbols on its right as well, and it'll be placed when you put a future tapestry card down, or it will have symbols on both places. So extra things to think about, extra rewards that you can get from the new tapestry cards. It's got new personalities, new civilizations for the Automa to play as. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything that it comes with. Just more and more mixture of things. This overlay card is from the new expansion. Technically, what you're supposed to do is have your civilization there, have your player board in the middle, have your city board on the right, and it would be tucked underneath this. For the purposes of space, I can't do that. Uh, but yeah, you, you wouldn't normally see the tuck this below your city bit of the card. That's to remind you of some of the new icons and things. So yes, we are using a new civilization and a new uh, city board. So our civilization is the Psionics. Psionics sample nearby realities and choose the one they prefer. This is the Fantasies and Futures expansion. They are more fantastical than anything you've seen in the previous expansions for Tapestry. When you gain something random, generate an extra option and pick one, discarding the other. So specifically, whenever you roll a die, instead roll it twice and choose one of the two things that you rolled. Whenever you gain a random card or tile from the deck or supply, draw two and keep one instead. Shuffle the other back into the supply. This applies only when gaining a random option, not a face-up option, or when you're just revealing it to refill a display. This effect adds, not multiplies, with other effects that give you an extra option. So when combined with empiricism, you would get a total of three. So something that would normally let you roll an additional time you would roll one more time instead. And at the start of income turns two to five, I get an extra benefit shown to the right. So a tile, a tapestry card, a technology card, a roll on the science die and a move up a track. So that's the civilization that we are being. Every time we get something random, we, we get two options basically. We're not as tied to the look of the draw or the roll as usual. What's this here for? And our... Our capital city is on a quagmire. Quagmire? Quagmire. Uh, so there are four will-o'-the-wisps living in impassable terrain near water. After income turn five, which is the end of the game, you lose five points for every landmark. It's these lovely big buildings. You lose five points for every one of those that is on reeds. They are the spaces that are orthogonally adjacent to the will-o'-the-wisps and gain three points for every landmark that is not on the reeds. So the purpose of this is to fill it up with our little buildings and these landmarks. The landmarks will fill up more space, but you want to be kind of strategic about it. We don't want to pop them on these reeds. You want to fill up rows and columns for points, and you want to fill up these districts, these three by three squares, to get a resource of your choice every time. These red dots are kind of already filled in. These are impassable terrain. They already count as filled up for the purposes of the district or the rows and columns. And the will of the wisps are basically special red dots that are just going to determine where we lose those points. So that's what we have started with. You also get the choice of a landmark. And I set this up before I watched bits of the old playthrough. I realized that I've had the same choice. Well, I've, I've chosen the same option as last time. I could have chosen the game store or the castle. These are from a previous expansion. This is everything turned on for this. The game store could have given me, at the end of your turn, if you have at least one technology in your top row, gain this landmark. Now that's fairly doable, wouldn't take us too long, uh, and it's a 3 by 2 landmark, so you can, you can see how it would fit in to your board. But the one I chose is the castle. At the end of your turn, if you move into a tier that no longer had its corresponding landmark, gain this landmark. On the main board, well and the arts board as well, all of the technology tracks 
are separated into tiers. The first person to get into the second tier of any track and the third and fourth tiers will get a special landmark. So if somebody races ahead of me, which Automa is likely to do on some track, then when I get to a tier and didn't get a landmark, I can get my special castle, which is huge. And hopefully you know, we've got some uh, nice space to pop that in. So that's the one I've gone for. Automa gets the other one. So let's have a look at Automa and hopefully which, uh, which button takes us there. There we go. So Automa has the game store already on their sheets. They get the one I didn't pick. It doesn't mean anything for them. They don't use the landmarks in any special way. They're just going to score points for having them. I'm playing on difficulty level three. Now two is normal. Four is what I played last time and I got demolished. So I'm uh, chickening out and going for three this time. They get two extra landmarks at the start and they get all of this stuff when they have income turns, which they will have in a little bit. You choose a civilization for them. This is one of the three new civilizations from this expansion. So they are the erratics. Now, what normally happens in this game on a bot turn, there is the automa that you're playing against and the shadow empire. The automa does things, gains things. The shadow empire still progresses on track, but isn't really your opponent. Doesn't score anything at the end of the game, anything like that. They're another thing to race against and get in the way. Now, the erratics tell me in the setup, do not put tokens on the tracks for the Shadow Empire. Don't determine its favorite track and ignore all of the Shadow Empire stuff in the Automa turn. Instead, when the Automa advances, according to the decision pair, which we'll see when they take a turn, they're going to go twice instead. Normally, they would just move one space forward on a track. They're going to move two spaces instead. Unless it would take them more than two spaces ahead of me, then you would ignore it. Unless it's their favourite track. A few conditions, but it'll be okay. Uh, but for every advance that gets ignored, so they can't move too far in front of me with this bonus, if they do, they get three points instead. So it might hold them back a bit, but it can score them a lot of points instead. Uh, ignore the restriction when selecting tracks. Then you put them back on the track indicated by the bottom icon on their decision card. Skip it if you're not using the arch track, if you're not playing with that particular expansion. So they are basically going to move twice every turn and then go back on a certain track. So we're going to have to juggle stuff. That's why I thought, playing against the erratics, they're going to move two spaces every turn. Surely it's going to be pretty likely they're going to get to tier two of a track and I'll hopefully be able to get the castle fairly quickly. We'll see how that goes, though. So that's the personality they've got. I think that's everything we need to see, really, until we start getting stuff. There is a new technology card out here from the new expansion. So I'm the first player, and the first thing that you need to do is have an income turn. So there are two types of turns in the game. You will either have an income turn and get a load of stuff, score some points, hopefully, and have an advanced turn where you'll move up on one of these tracks, paying some resources for it. Start of the game, you've got no resources, you've got to have an income track. So what we need to do is, the first few steps don't really matter because they don't happen in turn one. We can skip straight to number four, which is just gain income from your resource tracks. These are the tracks that we're talking about. So you basically get one of each of the resources. Try and remember these, you've got Coin, population, food, culture. Am I remembering those right? You get one of each of them anyway. And these tokens just move up on the track to show how many you've got. As we put these buildings out, we'll uncover more of these symbols, more point scoring opportunities, all of that stuff. So up at the markets, we get a point for every technology card we've got. Start the game, that's nothing. A point for every row or column that you've filled up on your city board. None of that at the very start. We get an exploration tile. So there is a bag that was included in one of the expansions that uh, we could put out. We, we can choose to put out when we have an exploration turn. And we also get, oh, I get two, don't I? I get to choose two and pick one. Forget that. So the only difference this will make really is you get points for matching up terrain when you put them out. So that could make a difference, but also you gain the benefit on the tile. 
So would I rather have culture or population? Now, I was thinking that, Scarcroft, like, since we get a big benefit for, I suppose everything is helped by that because going up the exploration track, you get to draw more tiles and have more choice of it. Drawing technology cards, if you don't like what's in the display and you draw from the top of the deck, we can pick from two still, so we've got a bit more option there. When you do combat, you get to roll dice and get different rewards based on what the dice said. But yeah, the science track is always a pretty fantastic track, but you roll a die, a lot of the rewards on the track are roll a die and move up that track. Sometimes you don't get the benefit of that track as well, sometimes you do. So yeah, the science might be a pull for us. So all that to say that like I do really like the science track as well, just for free movement and stuff. But yeah, because they're... Well, they're erratics, aren't they? They're moving, they're jumping forward a load and moving backwards on other tracks. So we don't really know what they're going to do. They haven't particularly got a focus. They're erratic. So really, the, the resources on them, when you want to move up particular tracks, you might want to have more culture for going up the military track. You might want to have more population for going up the science track. I'd like to get a technology as well. I think let's let's stick with population for now. It doesn't matter as much at the start of the game because any resource will move you up tier one of any of the tracks. So that's that. And we also get a tapestry card. Let's uh, zoom me back in. And again, because we are the psionics, we get to draw two and decide which one we want to keep. So we could have manifest destiny. When you play this, conquer a territory adjacent to your capital city. Then you may gain the benefit on any tile you control. It's going to be better later when we've got tiles out and we control them and stuff, if we go for that. But this is our capital city, and we have to start there in the solo game. And this is where the erratics are, the Ultima. The other card I've got is one of the new charm cards. So this is Haunted Houses. When we play this, we get to discard seven tapestry cards. If you do get a new civilization board, I think that is... I'm pretty sure, where's, where's my little big recommendation? If, uh, check on Board Game Geek when you're playing a game. If Action Andy has ever done a play raid for the game that you're playing, get it up on your screen. He makes fantastic things, and he updates this to include the latest expansion. Yeah, that, that symbol is, draw two new civilizations and keep one. So we could get an extra civilization power in the game, and seven points, or... So if you don't discard seven tapestry cards, you get a tapestry card and put one of your buildings out. So that's decent. And then in the future, so these get played. Sometimes you'll be asked to spend them for certain things, but one of the main uses for them is in the income phase, you get to play one of these tapestry cards, get its ability and all of that stuff. If we did play that as a tapestry card, in the future, when we played another one next to it, it's got this charm symbol, we'd get an extra two points. And of course, if you could get another tapestry card, that had a charm symbol on its left, then they'd both go off at the same time and it could all be glorious. So this is good if we really want to try and collect tapestry cards. It's not going to get played for ages, is it? To, to have to discard seven of them. I don't know that anything get, lets us draw loads and loads. It'd be a goal, wouldn't it? Or we could just think about, with that tapestry there, we could think about free conquers, gaining extra benefits on tiles. I like the haunted houses. I would like an extra civilization. And after everything, it might just be something to discard because we've gained uh, other things that are better instead. I want to go haunted houses. I like I like the way it sounds. His kicks. Oh, you you're getting it this weekend. Brilliant. You can't beat the Tapestry Ultima, like, in general. I got. Like, in the last two playthroughs that I've done, I think I did ridiculously well against it, and then last time got completely demolished by it. It, it always depends on what their personalities are and stuff. So that's the Tapestry card we've got in our hand now. And that's all of our income. So that's our first turn. It has to be an income phase. So we go over to Ultima. And they have to have an income phase first as well, just like us. They do slightly different things sometimes. So this card tells you everything that they do. 
the little numbers are based on the round that it is. So like us, they skip all of this stuff. Uh, they don't usually need resources or anything like that. They All they get is a tapestry card. And they generally don't use these. I guess it could depend on what their personality is and what they're going for. But yeah, there's, there's the perhaps the main thing is some tapestry cards are trap cards. I don't think we've seen one yet. And when somebody tries to conquer one of your territories, you can play a trap card to stop them from doing it. So if we try and conquer Ottoman's territories in uh, some military battles, then we draw like a random one from that pile. And if it's a trap card, we don't get to do it. So it simulates a bit of what real players would do. So that's all they have to do on their first income turn. Future ones are going to be horrible. Oh, Marty's having a very twitchy dream. Suddenly stopped. Uh, so now we can have a normal turn, which is an advanced turn. We have got five tracks, the main four on the board and the arts track that was added by the... It's the arts expansion, wasn't it? Arts and, arts and architects. Thanks, Michael. Uh, yes. So we can advance on any of these things. The cost for any advancement while we're in tier one, because we're at the start of all of these tracks, the cost is a resource of our choice. Later on, it will be a specific resource and any other one. The arts track's a bit different. It doesn't have a like a kind of favorite resource. It's anything, then any two different things, any three, any two of the same for the tiers. So what do we want to do the most? The first reward of the science track is roll a die, go up that track, but don't get the reward. Exploration would get us some new tiles. Military would let us conquer, put some new outposts out, spread out around the board. There is a race in the game for three different things. Topple two opponent outposts, so win two combats. Combat you do. You, you kind of automatically win unless they've got a trap card. Uh, complete any advancement track, get to the end of any one. And conquer the middle island. There's points available to do that. Now, I, I think I might have missed out on this last time. One thing that it's quite good to do, and even the rulebook recommends this, in your first round at least, is to get a technology card. Because one of the things you get in the full income phase is to move up, advance one of your technologies, get a benefit from it. And if you haven't got one, you're kind of wasting that. Oh, one thing I meant to say in my what does this expansion come with speech, my dream for expansions, because it's the final one, I suppose they can do this uh, more than other games can. It comes with a complete rulebook for the game and all of its expansions. It's so fantastic. Like, I wish it could always be like this. No longer like, set up the game as normal, but change all of these steps. I mean, it works like that, doesn't it? But so much easier with it all in here. And if you're not playing with arts and architecture, just skip anything where you see that symbol. Like, all of the ones are laid out. It looks like a kind of a thick rulebook, but a lot of the rulebook, like halfway onwards, is icon reference and reference to all of the tracks and cards and things like that. Such an amazing idea. And at the same time, there's a complete Autumn one that incorporates all the expansions as well. Amazing. I don't know why that only occurred to me right there. I think it's because the, the rulebook recommends tell people to get a technology card. I think we'll get a technology card. So I am going to spend, let's spend coin, why not? And I am going to move me, I'm the red player, up the technology track. And we have just achieved, is this the right button? There we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. We have just uh, invented, achieved pottery, and we can get a technology card. When you get a technology card, you either gain one of the three from the display or the one from the top of the deck. Now, top of the deck might be more attractive to us because we get to choose two and pick one. So we could either have time travel, the printing press, superhuman strength, or something random. You get nothing, basically, when you take this card. But when you advance it, either through a benefit on the tracks or something you get in the income phase, you'll definitely advance something in the income phase if you've got it, and you can. When it's first advanced, you get the circle benefit. So that is a coin, a resource, which is effectively a turn early on. A new tapestry card or move up one of these tracks whenever you see a track symbol and an x on it it's move up one of those tracks but you don't get the benefit of the space you ended up in like whereas this one without the x is move up that track and get the benefit as if you just like properly advanced and paid and everything 
So you get that when you move to the first space. When you advance the same card again in the future, you'll get the square benefit, but there's a kind of limitation for this. There's a requirement. You or a neighbor of yours, so me or the Automa, have to have gotten to this stage on a certain track. So that's four in the technology track or two in the technology track for these two respectively. So it might take a while for this one to be able to get to the top. This one up here, Superhuman Strength, is one of the new ones that's from Fantasies and uh, Futures. You may only upgrade to the top row if you have ever played a Charmed Tapestry onto your income map. So a Charmed Tapestry is one of the new ones that's got one of the benefits either side. You can only play this if you have played a Charmed Tapestry at any point, even if it's covered up by something. As long as you have played one at some point, you're fine. Or if you are on or after income turn five, so the very end of the game, the very last bit. So that might be something to think about, you know? We are, we have got a charm card. If, if that is the plan to play that, it's something to think about. Time travel would be lovely to get that resource now, but we'd probably have to wait a while. Oh, this is go back on a track, isn't it? It's got the arrow. That means regress on a track, go backwards a space, which could be good for repeating something. If we have to wait until later on, that would be fantastic if, say we'd gotten to the end of the military track and get the, the amazing last benefit, all of the last spaces on the tracks have got fantastic things. You could upgrade this, move back one, and then get to do that last thing again, maybe. It might be hard to achieve. Printing press will help us get more technologies. That would be quite nice. And the top one is play another tapestry card on top of the existing tapestry card, and a new one is now in effect that could be quite nice or we say we'd like a look in the mystery door and choose two different things i do like the idea of getting more technologies okay actually it's not more technologies it's more tapestry cards isn't it i'm talking rubbish i mean that's that's a free tapestry card if should we, should we try and go for haunted houses? Try and take it more seriously. I don't know. Now I've said mystery door. I want to do it. Let's see if we can make this haunted house happen, though. I will probably go for mystery in the future. So printing press goes here in the X space. We don't get any benefit of it yet, but we do when we advance it. And another possible technology for the future is eyeglasses, which is a benefit that gets you technology cards. And uh, its later upgrade would give you points for how many technology cards you've got. However, oh, Don's got a complete rule book as well. It's a great thing to have. Like, it's just it's so much easier to just read through that as one. Like when like sometimes users do it with things. Like when I did Pursuit of Happiness, just like users have made a complete rule book for it. I think there is one now that's a big box of it, so but it wasn't on the booking files. That's why I've got things wrong. Okay, so that's my turn. I paid, I moved up a track, I did the thing that was on the track. Automa works a little bit differently. Where's the Where's their deck gone? Is this their deck? This is their advanced deck. The normal deck's over here behind their board. So if we press this, hey, that should take you to my hand. So Automa has a deck. It's made up of mostly basic cards and one special card. So they get better cards and more cards as the turns go along. So what we need to do on their turn, there are loads of handy little cards that tell you what they do and how they do it. So on a bot turn, if their deck is empty, they have an income turn, skip the rest. The deck is obviously not empty just yet. Discard the old decision pair from the last turn. There isn't one at the moment. And draw a new pair. So the pair is going to be these two here. Now, the way we read these cards is we ignore everything that's on the left side of this card and everything that's on the right side of this card. We're just looking at this central valley that the two cards make. This is going to tell you the decision that they make. And this is kind of a, a hierarchy. If, if things are tied, this is the tiebreaker uh, decision that they make. So they are going to advance on a track. And the symbol here tells us how they're going to make that decision there's a blue one for autumn themselves and there's a gray one for the shadow empire now remember because we're playing against the erratics 
the Shadow Empire does nothing. We ignore all of the instructions for those. They do, if, if Autumn decides to start conquering, there's an option where sometimes they get to place a lying down Shadow Empire column. They still get to do that. But for all movement and tracks and stuff, Shadow Empire doesn't exist as far as we're concerned this game. So the square tells us that all non-finished tracks are eligible. So that's every track. It's the start of the game. If there is a tie at this point, they go to the first valid thing on this list. Automa goes top to bottom, Shadow Empire goes bottom to top. We only care about Automa, so they're going to be moving up the military track. Because they're erratic as well, they move twice. So they're going to move up the military track and get their benefit, which is archery. They get to conquer. That's the benefit of the space that they've just moved on. If they can conquer me, so if I'm adjacent to them in some way, they will try and conquer me. I'm not. There's no path to me. And I'm miles away. So they're going to conquer a neutral space. So how they make their decision on spaces. Can it be conquered or explored? Yeah, there's all of these places around them. Can it... Can they get the Middle Island achievement by going somewhere? No. The closest to one of my territories, that's probably that space there. Otherwise, closest to your territories. If I have a one token territory, they want to go closer to that because you can only conquer one token territories. Your capital city at the start or anything in the future that's got two tokens on it, no matter what color, you can't, you can't ever be combat there again. So they want to go closest to me. So they're going to go over to this space. And they are going to pop one of their outposts down. Now, if this symbol, the symbol that we can see basically, if this toppled symbol is present on the card that we are evaluating, then they also place a toppled Shadow Empire outpost. So that doesn't really mean anything for the Shadow Empire player. They don't exist as a player. But it basically means I can't come and conquer this space later on. There are two tokens on it. That's it. So they've moved a space. They've had their benefit. But because they are the erratics, they advance twice and gain benefits as usual. They can't move more than two spaces ahead of me unless it's on their favorite track. But this is two spaces ahead of me. So they will move over here. There's a nice little table as well that shows you benefits that Automa gets. They ignore a lot of the symbols on here, but it tells you, you know, what the symbol means. So they do their special conquer action when they get to conquer. When there is a tapestry card symbol, they get a tapestry card face down next to their mat. And generally, I think that only really matters, especially for this uh, civilization that they're playing. It only really matters for the... Like, if we try and conquer them, they might be trapped in there. So that's their turn. They've advanced on a track. There's still a bit more, but it's not going to happen. So at this point, if the deck's now empty and this hand symbol is present, on one of the cards, they have an income turn. We advance the automat, we advance the Shadow Empire. There we go. So it's back to us. We've had our technology card. I'm thinking science now. So moving up the technology track would get us a tapestry card and we could pay an extra resource to put one of our buildings out. That's tempting. I suppose military is the one if we want to kind of, if we want them to get the landmark first so we can gain our castle It'll, it might be good to follow them on there because they can't really move any further than that while we're dragging them back yeah they they would normally after moving twice they regress on a track but they're at the start of everything so they regress on where's the button i need that one they regress on the track that's at the bottom. So it would have been science in this case. So they don't because they're at the start of it. But in the future, they will start going back on tracks if they make different decisions. So yeah, we could get a tapestry card and pop a building out there. We could get to advance on a random track, but not get the benefit of the space. tempted by that i would like to get buildings out just because like it will unlock your income it will let you do more things for the rest of the game
and I wouldn't necessarily, I would like to skip the, for rolling the dice, I wouldn't mind skipping the first exploration space. I've got a tile. Scouting isn't the most important thing to me right now. Oh, wait a minute. I'm doing their decision wrong. They can gain the Middle Island achievement, so their priority is to go closest to the middle. So, almost the exact same stuff will happen, but they will draw and place a random tile instead. Yeah, if they can get... I was just thinking that might be an option for me myself, and then thought, well, actually, the Automa would do that. And they would. So, exact same thing happened, but they, they're they trying to get into the middle first. So we could try and... Maybe we should go up military. Just to do that. Or see if science can advance us on exploration for free. And then we could choose to do it next time. And the first thing we actually paid for would be to pop a tile out. Because we don't get to pop them out for free, like Automa does. That's, that's what we'll do. We'll go on science, so we can pay anything. Go on the first space. And we roll the die. So remember, because we are the psionics, we get to roll this twice. And have a look at what we could have. So, which button will take us here? So, I roll science. So, we could go up the science track another space. What's on it doesn't matter as much. I suppose it matters because you're going to be skipping this. So, I could move there for free, but I would not get the tapestry card and have the option of spending to pop a building out. So, we can either go science or we could go up technology. So, it's not the one I wanted. So, technology, we will be skipping tapestry card and optionally pop a building out. So we're going to be skipping that on one of them, whatever it is. I think... Now, if I did it on science, I could do science again next turn and have another go at the die. Or I could put a building out just by paying a resource. I suppose it doesn't help us getting the tapestry cards but i'm gonna go science so there's no other benefit it's just roll a die go up a track and don't get the benefit for this bonus move so that's it from me automa we they're not at the end of their deck so we need to discard the decision pair and draw a new one so there we go there's that hand symbol so if they had the if the deck was now empty they would go for an income turn but it's not so any track they're not at the end of, that's all of them. So there are different criteria than that. We've just managed to get it twice in a row. Their priority is science. So they're going to get to catch up with us, basically. There are two cubes here because science is their favorite thing. Sometimes when there's like a heart symbol, uh, the that means their favorite track. So at the start of the game, we roll the die to determine what it's going to be. It was science. So they move up here and we can check the benefit bet. What happens when they roll the green die? They advance on that track with or without the benefit, just like we do. So they don't get to re-roll. They move up the site. Oh, they're going to move up loads of spaces. So they don't get this benefit. Then their second movement, because they're the erratics, is going to be uh, herbalism. So they either choose to pop a building out or roll the die. They can't pop a building out, so they roll the die. And this might get them. No, they've chosen technology. So they move up one on technology. A lot of movements there. They don't get the benefit of the track because it had that X. So they've had their two movements, but the second part of the erratics turn is that they need to regress once on the track indicated by the bottom most tiebreaker icon. They don't get the benefit for it. They can go back to the start space, but they can't go further back from the start space. So that's all there is. So looking back at their decision card, the bottom most thing is their favorite track, which Maybe works out a bit, so they regress on their favourite track. So we're we're neck and neck on there at the moment, and that's their turn. Hey, Willem, yeah, I, I think you can skip the the dice. Like, yeah, it's at this early stage. I didn't really want to have spent a resource to not get anything, but yeah, I, th I think you can like choose to just not have the the benefit from it. So I'm tempted to stick with it, and now if we rolled science again, we would skip a nicer space, but we would be saving resources for the future, and we'd grab this landmark before Autumn gets to. 
Or if I rolled exploration, I'd be happy with that as well, because I could spend a resource then to pop a tile out and maybe be able to conquer at some point in the future. I'm going to go science again. Again, the resources don't particularly matter while we're in tier one. Or I could put a building out and that's income. That's stuff. Race for the landmark, get stuff. I think I've changed my mind and I'm going to get stuff. I'm going to get a building. Improve me income. And this is going to help when we get that landmark. Because if he does race ahead of us on science... Yeah. I wish I was doing different things. But yeah, if he does get ahead of us on science, then... We will get the castle for going one more space. I think it have changed my mind straight away. Because if we got the exploration... Yeah, pop, put it back. Now put it back. If we get exploration, we would get an extra resource and an extra turn from popping a tile out. Choose the die. So my choice is, I want exploration. Anything else would be disappointing. We've got science again, which would get us the landmark. Or, we could have the same choice. So a tapestry card, but we could get the building. Or, I think it's more resource effective. We don't get the benefits on this space, but we've saved paying two resources for being here. And we get, where have I put all these things up here? We get a lovely little landmark. So the landmark can go anywhere that's not got red on it. But if I don't want to lose points at the end of the game, I don't want it to be on the reeds either. That's thanks to my special starting space, my, my starting city. And what if? I'm thinking this, this castle is huge, right? And oddly shaped. You can see its shape on the card there. I was thinking of wasting this little... Oh, wait a minute. It's different to... It's the opposite of how it is on that card. Isn't it? It's like a mirror image of what the card says. Oh no, is it? Is it like looking at it from the bottom up? I see now. Yeah, because I was thinking I was going to have to have the top sticking out. Which I still kind of could do. But we could put it out something like that. I haven't got it yet. I'm just kind of planning where I'm going to put this thing. It's nowhere near reeds then. And everything's fine. So this... Right, somewhere down there would fill up a lot of spaces. We're one away from doing a district then. I think down there. It's not on reeds. I'm fine with that. Oh, thanks for us. There was a new card for castle. I missed that. Oh, are these replacement cards for things? Oh, no. Yeah, I've uh, skipped on all of that. There we go. That's nice, isn't it? So I need to get rid of that castle card. That's the one we've actually got. I'll have to have a look through at the end and um, replace the ones I'm meant to be replacing. That's nice, isn't it? So we've got a landmark from doing that. We've got one more turn in us next time. But we can go to Automa. So their deck isn't empty. So we discard those to draw a new decision pair. Again, they are looking at uh, tracks that they are not finished with. And the top of their decision is the art track. So this is... What takes us to the art track? That one? That one. So the art track. They get a tapestry card. It's just one that is on the top of their deck. There was one for tapestry cards. Oh, no. Oh, is it in the rule book? I'll have to check the rule book. And just go fish it out. Might have a good old stretch. So the first one, cave paintings. They just get a tapestry card. They move up a second space and get five points. I assume they're allowed to just get points, right? Maybe they don't. I'm not sure on that. Does anyone know? Like, points isn't in their benefits chart. Maybe it is in the complete rule, but... Actually, yeah, space... Non-art spaces don't really have that, do they? Yeah, it's not, it's not a benefit in the table of the... Autumn book, would they not get it? I don't think they get those points. 
They've moved two spaces anyway. We can always fix that if they need it. And they regress on the bottom. They're going back on science. They are erratic, aren't they? So they weren't even going to be competition for that tapestry, that uh, landmark anyway. Right. We've got one resource left. So like we can do an income turn any time. But you want to do it when you've spent all your stuff, don't you, really? So we could conquer somewhere by going up military. It's nice. Do you know what? I probably want to get a tapestry card, don't I? Because I don't want this to... It wouldn't be terrible to go out. I would get a new tapestry card and pop a building out. It wouldn't be the worst thing. I wouldn't get the amazing have loads of tapestry cards thing for it. But perhaps it would be nice. We would unfortunately have to skip the get a building out. And it means... I've maybe wasted the first round a little bit. Not getting... Not improving my income in any way. Getting to the next stage first would be nice, though. Like, it's why you might why you might want to call an income phase early. Do we want to? We would get an extra resource of our choice if we ended the thing early. But you, you play a tapestry card, and it would have to be haunted houses. We would have to get it out. Maybe abandon the get seven tapestries. We wouldn't get the extra civilization seven points, but we would still get a new tapestry card and pop a building out, which would, in, like, we'd have that income, we'd have this extra income, because I don't particularly want to do a thing right now. Otherwise, my turn is going to be probably move up on technology, skip the building, and get a new tapestry card as an option for when we do income. I think I'm, I think I'm going to do income. Let's see, see how this goes. So because I'm the psionics, at the first of all we do civilization abilities with a little asterisk if you've got these masterpieces they give you income first activate your civilization abilities at the start of income turn two i get a tile so i get to choose between two let's have one with a different resource on it and then It's play a tapestry card. So play a tapestry card that we've got. I am the first person to get here. If we want to keep going with science, I probably want more population. And nothing else needs me to be specific right now. So I'll choose that. So when played, you may discard seven tapestry cards if you do get a civilization and seven points. I haven't. Otherwise, gain a tapestry card. So our choice is going to be... Because with the science, we get to draw two and keep one. Deja vu. When played, either gain 7 points or the benefit of a tier 2 advancement that you have reached or surpassed. Do not gain the bonus. It's interesting. So you could do like, you could do the main icon but not the pay extra to get more bit. Oh, that means. And then in the future, when we played another tapestry card in front of it, we would get to roll the die and not get the benefit of the space. Or Renaissance. When played, advance on each track once. Do not get the benefits. You may gain any resulting bonuses for free. Hmm. Which bonuses? Like the... So you're allowed to gain these for free. Normally you're not allowed to do that, are you? It's just this card letting us do that. So if you geared it up so that you were behind one of these on every track. That could be something really to shoot for, shouldn't it? Yeah, we can't play it right now, though. Oh, what? We can't... Where's... What was that thing? I said something that let us play a tapestry card on top. Oh, that's our printing press. We're not going to get to do that for ages. That's the top of our printing presses. Play a tapestry card on top of another, and now that, that's in play instead. Yeah, we're in a pretty good place for Renaissance, but if we can try and end the round in a good place for Renaissance, that is probably going to be our next uh, tapestry card to play. So yeah, I'll pick that instead of Deja Vu. I know it should get shuffled in, but it takes ages. Right. Play my tapestry card. And I also get this building out somewhere. So I think... 
I'm going to pop it here. That's nearly a row or column filled, but it is a district filled, so I can have another resource. I'm just going to go for population again. That was from the tapestry card. Got a new tapestry card and pop a building out. Then upgrade a tech card. That's my printing press. And our reward from that is we get a tapestry card. Let's have a look at another one. So we could choose Pirate Rule. This era, whenever you conquer a territory tile, get the benefit on the tile as well as the conquer die. Or Government Grants. When you play this, advance on the art track and gain the benefit. You may get the bonus for free. Then regress on another track and gain the benefit, but not the bonus. I like that better than Pirate Rule. If we'd taken the other one initially and gone combat that would probably be a good one to follow it up with. So we upgrade a tech card and then gain the points on your income mat. So a point for every technology card, that's one. Point for every row or column filled, none right now. And that's it. Haven't unlocked any other VP bits. And then gain income from the resource tracks. Oh, might want to go everywhere. Gain income from the resource tracks, that is one food, two population, one food, and one culture. Not the ideal thing I wanted to do, but I feel like that's that's decent. That's gained us some stuff. Hey, John, how's it going? And that's it for the income phase. That, so that's the full income phase rather than just the, the baby one you get at the start of the game. Let's have a look what uh, Autumn is going to do. So their deck isn't empty, so they don't default to an income phase, but they might still do one. Yes, they do. So we draw the cards. If the deck is now empty and this hand is present, where is it? Income turn, skip the advancement. So there we go. <coughs> so we can have a look over at... Automas, th their level card tells us what they do in an income phase. So first up, they are going to decide whether they want to keep their favorite track. Oh, I need to keep those cards, actually. The way they were. Because it matters for this thing, actually. So if they are now at the end of their favorite track, or someone is ahead of them on their favorite track, they change their favorite marker. To what this says so it's the track where they are closest to the end or a landmark which is either going to be arts they're two away or military they're two away tiebreaker is the card so the first one up is military so they move their favorite track becomes military there we go then both of the bots advance using the decision pair. I assume they don't advance twice because this isn't their turn? Or do they because it's an income turn? I'll assume not. I don't know. According to the last decision pair, it would be the place that they're closest to a landmark or the end of, isn't it? Is the house with the flag. Non-finished track, closest to landmark, stroke, end. So it would be military. Again, it would be a choice between military and art. They'd move up military. Would they move twice, though? Would they move twice and regress on something, like art? It's a bit unclear. I don't, I don't think there's, like, a, a new bit, is there? That clarifies, like, each person. No, there's the scenarios in there. There is a couple of new scenarios as well for the Fantasies and Futures expansion. I would assume not. I'm happy to be contradicted if you spotted something. So, yes, advancements. Then gain the stuff from their civilization card if their civilization card says they get something in the income turn. It doesn't. No, the erratics don't get anything. Then they get points. So, looking at their card, this is the leftmost visible multiplier. So for every landmark or tile that they control, they get one point. So they control three landmarks and two tiles. So five points. 
every space they've gone up the military or science track times zero so we won't bother counting that and the other three tracks a point per space so they've got a point they've got two points on arts another one on technology so that's three altogether so they are on eight points then in round two they gain two cards from their like advancement deck in rounds three and four they're going to gain two they're going to gain two new pairs in a minute these are all going to get gathered together and uh, shoveled up and then they put the card from their tapestry deck on this space so it doesn't matter it's just covering up the multipliers for later on and increasing the multipliers they get a new tapestry card onto their part so that, that comes from the deck doesn't it that comes from the deck shouldn't it come from their pile so put one back on their pile and they've got a new one on their pile now they've got loads of tapestry cards and then shuffle the decision deck including all of the old cards make sure they're the same way around and that's their income turn seen the the full income turns there okay so i have now got quite a lot of resources i think I've got eight resources so i would quite like to see if we could get the middle island as well I don't know if that's something to really aim for. It would be nice to get into tier 2 of technology so that we could pop the printing press all the way up. The next stage of science is roll the die and get the benefit of the space you move to and optionally discard two tapestry cards for five points. If we've got another tapestry card I'd like another technology card, really, as well. I think I would like to do that exploration. I don't need two new tiles, but... It would be nice to gain... I suppose we don't need to race for the middle, because we could still get to the middle at some point. We wouldn't get the 10 points for being first, but we'd get the 5 points for being second, and we could maybe conquer them. They might get to go in that space, though, and put one of them shadow markers down, though, is the annoying part. And then we can never get in the middle. Explore. That's what we're doing. Let's spend a population just because I've ended up with so much, so much of it. So scouting is just draw two tiles and, well, I get to draw three and keep two, I think. I think just have a, a menagerie of different things. Oh, a technology card. I might want that more than a resource. I don't know, though. Let's just get different resource types. And that's all I get from that. Autumn, uh, hey, Bonnie, how's it going? I think I shuffled their deck, but it's extra shuffled now if it wasn't. Uh, so they obviously haven't got this at the end of their deck because they've only just had an income turn. They are looking at... The track they are closest to a landmark on or closest to the end of. And that, for sure, is military. So we don't need any tiebreaker. They're one away from the landmark there. So they're going to move a space. They get that landmark. That one? Landmarks seem all out of order now. I thought I'd put them in some kind of order. So they get that landmark with some points later on. And I don't think they get anything from those spaces do they they don't put buildings out they don't get um, points for spaces i don't think but they move up twice because they are the erratics they get to conquer and put a building out which they ignore so conquering they go for the middle island don't they the toppled thing is there as well so the middle island is out of reach so because the achievement's available they go for that they get the achievements i don't know where their cubes have gone Oh, they're, they're behind their pillars. They've conquered the middle, middle island. They get 10 points. Everyone the new... They've all got a solo mode. The... Yeah, even the base game. The, they add, like, difficulties and 
civilizations for the bot to play and scenarios you can play as well. They add more and more things for them. Right. So they've moved twice on tracks and then they regress on the bottom most, which is science. They're back to the start of science. Ouch. Oh no, they don't get they don't get another one, do they? They haven't done that. Forget all of that, because have I broken this in, in previous turns? They can't get a free movement if it would take them more than two spaces in front of me. Instead of moving along the track, they get three points instead. So, maybe we can still do it. Okay, exploration. Let's spend food. The next exploration is rafts. Put one of these tiles out. I want a tile there. I've got to try and conquer twice. But let's we can get a technology card. Now, let's get a resource so we can keep doing turns. So, I want to match up as many tiles as possible. Yeah, I haven't really concentrated on doing that, have I? But we could. If we look on the map, I've matched water, water, and sand, and water. So that's four, isn't it? So that's something. And I get the resource in the middle, which is some population again. And I can spend a resource for a tapestry card. It might help for, like, if we want to do chemistry later. And advance on something. To have extra available. But now I, I don't want it. No, no, no. Right, so that's all... That's all there. I've still got to do two con conquers before... I can try and get there first. Because they would have conquered and gone in that middle space. Right. Their turn. Deck's not empty, so discard the old pair. Look at the new pair. Any deck, any track they're not at the end of. That's all of them. Priority, technology. So they move up technology. They get a tapestry card. They've got so many now. Surely there's a trap mixed in there somewhere. They only get to draw one, but could happen, couldn't it? And then they move again. And I think think oh they replace all the available tech cards i'm gonna say they don't they definitely don't get them but they do replace them so the assembly line this is quite nice because its benefit is when this gets to the first upgrade stage you can put something you can get the benefit of something's square stage if you qualify for it and then when it gets to the square stage you can get the bonus of something circle stage like regain the the benefit of something that's in that row. So that's quite nice. Weather control is like a... It's one that you have to have played a charm card. We have played a charm card now, so we're kind of okay with that. But the one benefit is put a tile out. The top benefit is get the benefit of a space you're in again. Just single use, though. You can't regain that through any abilities. Sewage and plumbing gets a culture. Pop a building out. And that one wants me to be up the technology track, which I know I'm not doing a very good job of doing. Ooh. I'm tempted by all of those. Weather control, though. I have got a charm card out, haven't I? Exploring could get us a load of things. Buildings. Now, sewage and plumbing. Sewage and... I don't know why I'm grabbing one. That's that's what that's what me... That's what I'm leading towards if I, if I get one next time. So they've gone up that track twice. And they regress on arts, which is at the bottom. Okay. So you'll see a new expansion every year. Is this the end? As, as far as like all of the description and everything for it goes, this is the final expansion. And like it comes with like a, a consolidated, like full rule book for the rewritten rule book for the base game and all the expansions. So I think this is it. As, as far as they're concerned for now, anyway. Who knows? I'm sure it's like a never say never kind of thing. For now, it's like, this is it. Right, so what did I want to do? We want to do some military, don't we? Let's do... Let's spend a culture. Move up. Conquer. I'm going to conquer just an empty space. Pop my pillar in there. And you roll the dice. We get to roll them twice. Ooh, let's zoom in somewhere. Yeah, that'll be okay. 
Because with the psionics, we get to roll them twice and decide. So seven points. That's the best thing, right? On this die. I would be daft to re-roll that. Oh no, but you can re-roll them and choose. So seven points and a food and a coin. Five points and the resource on the tile. So definitely go for seven points over five, for sure. And uh, I don't particularly mind about the resource. I've got loads of population though, so I'll go coin. So I haven't got anything else. So there we go. That's my conquest. Again, a bit dangerous because if they get in there in the middle, they can then do another conquest in the future and take over my space. But maybe I can get in there first. Right, Automa. Not at the end of the deck, so draw a new pair. Any track they're not at the end of, and the priority is arts. And they're moving back on science, which is rubbish, because they can't move back any further on science. So the first one for arts, they get nothing. Second one, they don't get these cards, do they? They just refresh the display. Let me just triple check that, because it's not on the cards. Uh, yeah, discard all three face-up masterpiece cards and replace them, which we've made no progress on the arts track yet, so we haven't really looked at, but they give you extra income in your income phases. Can be points for stuff, can be extra resources, can be... Is that an upgrade? Upgrade a tech card. It can't be upgraded more than once this turn, yeah. Right. So they've moved twice, and they move back on science, which they can't do because they're on the start space. I think there's... There's like... It, it isn't the, the map that they make does it combine and put the arts track on it? I think maybe. Right, so what are we going to do? Keep doing military? I mean, the next thing... I've gotten into a bit of an arms race, haven't I? The downside of this is it's going to get in the way of Renaissance. Loads. I don't know why I've just paid two things. I need to pay one for military. It's two for science. At the moment, I'm right behind a load of bonus spaces on those bits. So playing Renaissance in the income phase would move me up one and get the bonus for free of everything. And just concentrate on Explore and get to the bonus space for that, maybe. Getting into the next tier of military would be nice, though, because... No, we haven't got the culture anymore. I've spent it. Because... I think culture would be on the die, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is. Because we'd get our castle, because the landmark isn't there anymore. So the castle is up for grabs. Yeah, the bonus isn't so great for science. But I'd like to try and move a bit more on other tracks first, just because then that freebie will move me up more things. It would be great if it moved me up science. And I've got a, a double roll. We've got a lot of resources. Let's do another military. It is just get a tapestry card, though. If we can get that castle, where does it go? And just remember that it doesn't actually exist here anymore at the moment. Or you could place like like that and it left a two by two. That would have been an idea. Do I want to pay to put another building out? Yes. So I'll get more resources and we can start popping it on the reeds where I'm not allowed to have landmarks oh and a tapestry card choice is cloud colonies Ooh, get a new tile and pop a tile out and that would happen along with the two points that would be a lovely combination but what does it do score three points for each territory you control that has a picture of clouds that would just be my starting territory at the moment. So maybe not as good in practice. Or I could choose infrastructure upgrade. When played, choose and gain a landmark card. 
If none are available, get 10 points. Another landmark. I like that better as an idea. I, I do like the charm possibility. But yeah. Uh, but, oh, it's bot now, isn't it? Their deck's not empty, so draw a new pair. Their deck isn't empty now, so we don't worry about the hand. Any track they're not at the end of, military is their priority. They can only move one, because they can't move more than two in front of me. Oh, wait. yeah. So, they're going to get to conquer. The toppled thing is there, so annoyingly they have done it anyway. So they've done that. They get three points because they can't do their bonus free move. They get ten points because they've conquered the middle island first. It's all come crashing down. I tried. And because they had that toppled symbol there, I can't go into the middle at all. And now they're primed like to be able to take over that territory. I can't do anything about it. Oh well. Right. So they move up that. And they move back on arts. Which is something, I guess. Okay. So I'm not bothered about military at all anymore. But I've kind of messed up Renaissance a bit. I probably want to do technology a bit. To see if I can get to tier 2 or get a different technology. So that we could have some progress in the next income phase. We could, of course, explore somewhere else and then be getting new territories out. I think technology still might do one science roll. Get a tapestry card. And I'm going to pay to pop a building out. Let's put it there where we're not allowed a thing. And I'll get extra income from that. New tapestry card. Cartography. When played, gain a tile and explore it. If you gain at least three points from the exploration, you may also conquer the territory. That's quite nice. Revisionism. This... Revisionism. This era, whenever you gain a landmark, also get a resource. If you reach an already claimed landmark, gain a building. Ooh. Both. I suppose the problem with them being so erratic is there's not a lot of empty landmark bits. It could be something cool to save later. Yeah, I don't know with that one. I don't think I play either of them, actually. Okay. They, they're they going to get to this income phase before me, aren't they? Cause I, partly because I ended up with so many resources. If I'd done the income phase first, I would get two resources. Let's see if they're going to income phase them. The hand is not there. They are not. So track they aren't at the end of, starting with science. So they're going to move science, roll the die, but don't get the benefits. That's going to be arts. And then science once more, they get a tapestry card. And they regress on their favourite, which is military. Okay, we've got some resources left. Still a chance to do... I think we maybe do one more technology and pick the technology card. Because I need either a technology card or to be... I suppose... If we ignored science and explored again, I can get a technology card from this. Or ignored technology. I could get the technology card from this. And maybe even use that progression to... Get the hook. Yeah. Like, if I move up, if I move up technology first, then if I roll it on science, I can go up to the next tier and save a bit of money. If I roll science, I'll get to roll again. And I'd get a landmark for getting to tier two of that, and I'd be able to push this up. It's a bit of a gamble, I suppose. But if we rolled Explore, I'd get potentially another resource to do something with them. Yeah, do technology.
Oh, yeah, because you were going to go for the hut. If you go for the hut, though, only two of the places that you can roll will get you a technology card. Got to go tech card, I think. I'm going to go sewage and plumbing. Easier one to do. Get me a resource. Get me a building later on. I'm going to go for the mystery door. I'm going to go mystery door. So we get to draw two. And look at one. So we could do calculus. Resource. Ooh. This wants us to put a landmark on it. When we gain a landmark, we can put it on this card instead of actually getting it. That's its criteria for being able to get its top reward of move up the science track. Or a radio. Three points at first. Later on, choose two, draw two civilization cards and pick a new one to, to add on to the existing one we've got. But to be able to do that, me or the automat has got to be at level four science. I don't like either of them. Maybe we'd want to do that with a landmark later. And I'd rather have the resource early on. Yeah, but I'd have been happier with sewage and plumbing, I think. Right. What's going on? Oh yeah, I did that and I chose technology card. Begrudgingly a little bit. They've got no cards left, so they're going to have an income turn and get there first, which means I don't get those resources and they're going to get some points. So, first up. Are they at the end of their favourite track or am I ahead of them on it? No. So their favourite track stays the same. Next up, they progress on the track according to... Oh, the last drawn cards which was that one so science again yeah it's the last thing they did isn't it so they go there and they roll the die and move and don't get the benefit of technology oh they're getting the technology thing annoying they get that and then one more up science which gets them a tapestry card they've got a billion no, no, they don't get two, do they? This isn't their turn. But still, they've had the annoying thing. Civilization bonus, they haven't got one. Points. So a point for every landmark. One, two, three, four, five. And space they own, which is another three. So that's eight. And a point for every military. Four spaces. And science, five, six, seven. There's a bit of a gulf. And then a point for every other space. So four, seven. Ouch. And yeah, that's it for points. Oh no, they also get three points for being the first one to this era. Two new pairs of cards going into their deck. No, there's no penalty for not doing your tech cards. Two new things in the deck. Get a tapestry card from the deck and pop it over their space there. And they get a new tapestry card on the top of their deck. And, but I can't. Like, they've got their starting state and both of the times that they've conquered, they have had the thing that lets them put a shadow marker out. So yeah, I can't conquer them, and I, I don't get the option of doing that, of putting a, a pillar out. It's gone very badly for me, I feel like. Let's see them. Right, that's them. I've still got resources. It means if I, take to, if I keep taking turns, I'm going to fall behind and not get the income phases first, but let's do our science thing and hope it works out. So, we've got a lot of tapestry cards now. I'm tempted to turn two in for five points. I'd like a landmark card, empty landmarks. Renaissance isn't as exciting anymore. It might be good later. No, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it. For five points, so far behind. And roll the die. We do get to roll it twice, and we get the benefit from the space. So either science, which would be another roll, so that's very tempting. Or military. Military is a pretty cheap one to go up. And I can't really conquer anywhere interesting. So I'm going to choose science. 
So I can either pop a building out. It would complete a district. So get me a resource. Oh, I'd, I'd be able to have another turn. Or I could roll the die. Hmm. I'd potentially be able to play two, both of my tapestry cards. If I can get into tier two and choose this as the upgrade. I think I want the roll. Okay. Our choice is going to be... Arts would be a tapestry card, but we haven't moved on it at all. Again, it's another cheap... one. Or technology. That's exactly what we wanted. Boom. Go up there and get the benefit. Wipe the display. And then have a tapestry... And then have a technology card. So, another option. And we are now in tier two. And we have just gone into a space where the... Landmark has already been taken. And that's the criteria for gaining the castle. So, you know, it could. Does it encroach on the reeds if I put it there? Yes, it does. So I would lose five points for doing that at the end. Maybe I should stick to my original plan and just pop it over here where there's a ton of space for it. And it fills in a district and gets... Oh, it gets me a resource and I can have another turn. Yeah. I think there. It's a bit awkward here. But that's where I'm going to have it. So that's filled in a district so I can have a resource. It doesn't matter which because I can't do anything other than one of the base, one of the tier one movements with just single resource. So we could have vaccine, move up the science track and don't get the benefit. Top benefit, a point for every space you've moved up the science track. Potentially a lot of points. Pop, uh, mark it out, point for every market. Do a conquer action point for every thing you've gained or we go mystery door again and maybe regret it so we've got perfect memory move up arts or science and don't get the benefit but moving to the top we could move there and do get the benefit or paper build in and then later a point for every one of them buildings I think the building, you know. I suppose progression is another landmark. I would miss being able to reactivate another space. That does get me close. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It would be a shame in a way. No, no, no. I'm going to go this because I think I'm going to play two tapestry cards this time. Right. Okay. What, what happened? I've, I've done that, haven't I? Yeah, and I progressed on technology. So, Automa is just having another turn. It doesn't matter that they're ahead in income phases. So, track that they aren't at the end of. Oh, track that they're closest to the end of? What's the flag one mean? Non-finished, but they're closest to the end of. So that would be military, wouldn't it? I know this, they're at the same point on technology, actually. So military or technology, the first one that comes up is technology. So the first one, get a building, they don't get it. Their second movement, get a building, they don't do it. And then they move back on their favourite, which is military. Okay, I've now got a resource. Do I want to have another turn? Could have the income phase, or could tapestry card, not too exciting. Rather than getting the conquer there, getting the building out is a bit tempting. It wouldn't be a resource though, would it? It would be a point for every conquered place, which but later on it's more resources, but the next one is just points. Explore or pop, that would be a resource though. Yeah, I'm going to progress exploration, and I'm going to pop out a farm that could just be there though and fill in the district or there and do the row and I would get a point 
or column up there. If you carried on, what would you do? Pop that building out, it's not as... Yeah, you'd, you'd be filling in stuff. Fill in that there. District's full. We, we don't have to spend the resource, though. Get, get a population, a science resource. And maybe we'll income next time. But if I did military and got the building... Yeah, you don't get a resource from doing a, a rogue stroke column. Yeah, I think I think I'll income next time. Ultima. They aren't at the end of the deck, and so they are track they haven't finished. Priority exploration, right? Yeah, all non-finished tracks, priority the exploration tracks. So they get tiles, but I don't think they do anything for gaining tiles, do they? That's not a benefit they care about. The next one is uh, explore. Remember what they do when they explore. So valid hexes are hexes that can be explored. So anything adjacent to where they have a presence. And it is just the hex. If their favourite isn't military, they want to be the furthest from me. So we just do the... Do we just do the hex tiebreaker? Whenever you need to do the hex tiebreaker, there's a little diagram here. Start from this hex on the map and work down. There's different like configurations of that. So the first valid space they get to working downwards from here is there. So they pop that down. That's upgraded technology. Uh, draw and place a random tile. There we go. So that's their benefit from that. And they move back on arts. So they're just hovering around that space. So I could, I don't want to move up arts and get a tapestry card. I kind of want that building, but I'm also not massively fussed. Can't afford anything else. So I think I think income turn. Income turn. So, income turn. We haven't got any masterpieces. Oh, we get tapestry cards, so we might have a different choice than these two. These two are quite nice. Generation ships. When played, draw three space cards. Place one at the right edge of your income mass and shuffle the others back into the supply. In income turn five... Explore this space card or discard it and place. Is that a masterpiece? An, an inspiration tile. Oh, an inspiration tile makes your. Like these spaces that we're uncovering, makes them nicer. That's tempting. So something good for the end of the game, though, rather than now. Colonialism. Choose a territory trial you control and gain the following resources based on its land terrains. So I could get. I've got mount I've got desert and grassland basically, so I could get two resources for playing that. I don't want colonialism. But I'm thinking of playing these two. So play a tapestry card. What I'm thinking is this one here is advance on the arts track and get the benefits. You may get the bonus for free. Not that excited. Because it's just getting another tapestry card. If I waited though. Ooh. Do you know what? I'm not going to do any of that. I have seen stuff. Which I suppose is a bit cheeky. But. I've just realised what I should be doing with my government grants. If I'm moving up the arts track. I'm going to play both of those um, tapestry cards. I'm not going to income. I am going to move up the tap the arts card so that's my tapestry card for that rather than for the start of the income because i can move up here have the five points and the bonus for free and put another building out it is delaying me another turn but i feel like it's better i'm not going to get those resources for being in front and they're going to get four more points when they income again but that's just the way it is so tracks they're closest to a landmark or the end that would be they're one space away on here, so it's technology, is what they're moving up. So they go there and get the landmark, which is that one. I need just a die or something with a number of how many landmarks they've got. I have got like a D20 or anything in front of me. So there's no space for all the landmarks on their board. So they've moved up that. They can't move a second space. Oh, they wipe the display when they should get a technology card. 
They can't move a second space because they're more than two ahead of me. So they get three points instead. And they move back on science. Okay. Now I'm going to have the income phase. And hopefully this is going to work out better. So, tapestry card. I can either, this era, gain population whenever you advance to a new tier in science or arts. Tick, Technomancy. When played, gain the circle benefit from two of the three available tech cards. That could be a building and a resource. Do not invent or discard them, just leave them. I don't want two tiles, but a resource and another red building could be quite nice. I think what we're going to do is still going to be nice, though. Renaissance was good. Tech cards, but I think I might save this until the tech card display is nicer. Right. So that's my civilization ability. The tapestry card I want to play. So let's do government grants first. I get two points for putting a card to the right of that charm thing. That's, that's the new ability. That's not me. So I'm on 19. When played, advance on the arts track and gain the benefit. Five points. You may gain the bonus for free. That's put another building out. The buildings are points for things, aren't they? Straight four points. Point for every row and column I haven't done yet, but I could do one there. Point for every... I've got three technologies, but four points is just better, better, isn't it, in general? And we can still complete... Uh, row stroke column. Yeah, there's a row done. So we'll get a point in a minute. Okay, so that's that. Then you must regress on another track, but get the benefit. So I don't really want to regress into another tier. What I wanted to do is regress on here and get the benefit, but not the bonus. We might just move straight back up it. I get to roll twice, either military or technology. Technology is another building. I don't get the bonus. The bonus is quite nice. It's up one in technologies. But another building out, that could be another resource and another row stroke column. Moving up technology. I'm popping you out and I'm putting you there. That's two rows and columns done now. Okay, so that's the tapestry card. Upgrade a tech card and gain points on your income mat. So I could either put another building out, could be all right, get a resource, or I'm at technology tier two. I could invent the, I could really fulfill the print, printing press. And I'm going to play a tapestry card over the top of another one. And now this one applies. It's a when played one, so it doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to play infrastructure upgrade. Choose a landmark card. Choose one. So I can't choose the... I'm going to have to work out which one of this is right. These are the two extra that the Autumn has started with and the, the one I didn't choose that they got to start with. So they're out of it. So what's the easiest thing? At the end of your turn, if you have invented at least three technologies, when have you invented them? When you have three tech cards. I've got three. So we could just get this at the end of a turn. At the end of a turn, you have at least three income buildings of the same type. I've got that. I've got the brown ones. TV station's a bit bigger. We've got space for it. That one's nicer. At the end of your turn, if you have at least six tiles in your supply, I've got three. I'll have four in a minute, but... At the end of your turn, if you have at least one complete row or column in your capital city, gain this. That's a full square. Pop that there. Two complete districts. We have done that. Gain this landmark... I think that's an alternative of the bird watching perch. At the end of your turn, if you control three territories adjacent to your starting territory, we haven't got that. I think this. The skyscraper is just a complete district. Maybe we can get some points from the map at, uh, at some point. Right. That's the landmark I'm going for. So that's the technology getting upgraded. Then get points on your mat. Point for every technology. Three. Points for every row or column. One column, one row, two points. Point 
point, four points just on that track and no points from that track. Then income from resources. We get two coin, two population, three food and two culture. I think that's only one more resource than we had last turn because I did the income phase first last time, didn't I? Maybe that's good. Then. Maybe we're in a, a good position now. And that's it. Bot has waited patiently through all of that. And so any track they're not at the end of, technology is their priority. They can only move one. They can't move more than two in front of me. They don't care about gaining buildings and getting points for them. But they do get three points for the space they can't move. And they move back on military. Hmm. So at the end of my turn, I will get that thing, which is quite nice as well. That's a lot of space filled in on the board. Right. What do we want to do the most? Point for every red building and poppy yellow building out. Roll the die is tempting. What's also tempting, though, I don't want to spread myself too thin. It's tempting to move up arts a bit and military so that like the die roll would move you into like an advanced bit. Let's not do that though. Let's not get greedy. Let's roll the die. We need to pay a population and something else. A food because I've got the most of it. So we're back to where we were. And I can either move up military. I don't want military. That's a cheap one. Or science. Science. Because we get a landmark. So where's that going to go? There. Oh, there it's on a read, isn't it, annoyingly? You can have them off the board, I think. Suddenly this one isn't as good. <laughs> if we're willing to put it on a read, it's okay. But I'm not really. Oh, it's, oh yeah, that goes on a read, doesn't it? So it would be minus five points. Well, it's minus eight points, really, because it's, it's three points if it's not on a read. We could put it there, couldn't we? And just have it off the board a bit. It's a bit of a waste. Just watch your martyr stress stretching. But now we've gained that landmark. That was too big. I'm going to put it like that. Right. And this is, just double check, select your position on any track, regain the benefit, and you may pay for the bonus. You can only do that once per turn. So... We could either get a masterpiece, which is some income, and the income is an extra technology upgrade every income phase. That's only two more income phases, but still. Point for every technology, an extra resource of our choice. Point for every track we've moved up science. Tech track. Oh, pop a building out. Oh, we can pay for the bonus, can't we? Great idea. So pop any building out. I think... I mean, the next spa space on technology is a point for every red building. So put in another red building out. Or now we get two points for every row or column. I think that is more exciting. Can we get another row and column from this? Yes. If I pop it there, that's another column done. And we're one away from doing that district, which we could do with one more movement on something. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. We're doing, we put that out. And then I can pay a resource, which I'll... Should I be on two on everything? No, I think I should be at one on that. We'll pay a culture to move up a technology, and we could either get a population now. That's a bit tempting. Or we could put a house out. Put a house out because it doesn't. Yeah, it moves the technology up. So, whoops, knocks everything off. Let's invent paper. We get this building out, which completes this di district, and we can still have a population that way because we get a resource for completing the district. Boom. Lovely. That's all that done. Bot time. The, the deck is not done. So, closest to the landmark or the end. So, ages away there, ages away there. Two away, two away, two away. So technology, exploit technology is the top of the list. So they move a space. They can't move two. 
They don't care about technology things, but they do get three points for not being able to move their second space. And they move back on arts. Lovely stretch. Right. Science is just proper building out and get a point for all of those buildings. I have got a fair few of those out. And it is another point for every row and column, though. We're quite close to more rows and columns. I think. Okay, the military is easy. That's just one resource to get another building out. Thinking of the, the map now, we can potentially get like three points for each row and column. It would be good to try and do that, wouldn't it? Oh, I've had a turn. I should have put the skyscraper out ages ago, shouldn't I? Which only really makes a difference for... Oh, we, we're close to doing another row. Uh, it makes a difference for I can have another resource. I'll go population again. That should have happened at some point in the past. Right. So again, a masterpiece for moving up in arts. Nice for another couple of things, especially if we could get a technology. And that's popping another building out as well. This, oh, there's a landmark here. And we get to explore a bit. Two more movements on science is move up military technology or exploration for free. I don't know that we've got the resources to do what I'd like to do. Which is to move up here twice. Move up here once and then move up here twice and the free one can be technology taken us into this tier. Just for like saving money a bit. But the landmark gone which is a bit of a shame. If they choose exploration that landmark's gone. And that's the only one that could be gone. I'm going to do exploration. Even though I'm not as excited about it. We'd get a few points. We'd get a resource. Food and something else. I'm going to go food population. I moved that down too. No, that'll go. I'm going to go exploration. Get a landmark. And it is... Which one is it? Oh, that one. It's a little one. So, oh, this is probably like the last landmark that we care about getting. Reads do not count as filled in, but if you put a landmark on them, you lose five points. Five, minus five points for every landmark that is on the reads, plus two points, plus three points for every landmark you have that isn't on the reads. So it might have been an idea to like leave that off and leave some space, but we could maybe like tuck, we could even just pop that there. There's another row in. You can have them hanging off the end, can't you? And then we've got space for more landmarks here, or you just have it doing its maximum space for now because we might get something else that can just be on those two spaces mightn't we and then you're closer to like filling up the district we're not really we're we're, we're a ways from filling up that district yeah put it there Right, that's that, and then I get a tile, but I get a choice of two tiles. I think we could get another landmark. Or at least science, we're so far ahead on, we'll surely get that one. Star or bag, I suppose the types as well. We'll go for coins, and then put a tile out. So I'm thinking, tile against the technology card, over everything else. It would, oh, it would match up quite nicely here. Grass, 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 that's three points. And a technology card could be could be a building, could be a resource, and eventually a masterpiece. Or we go behind the mystery door. We get a point for every technology, don't we, as well? Mystery. So. Get a resource or a space card. Uh, get explore or ex space explore and then oh that's get a space tile isn't it that's, that's space explore and you need a charm card to be able to do it we have got a charm card or get a tapestry card 
Inspire is quite nice, but we have to be on... One of us has to be on Arts Level 3. I think another one I'm not as excited about. Should have gone with the building. And Explore can get us something, can't it? Mm. Futures is like... Like, the future. Like, it's all, like... There's, there's time travelling stuff and stuff, I think. Like, future technologies and stuff. Right. How did I get that? Oh, I explored, didn't I, to get that uh, landmark. Bot. Autumn. So, who's the name? Uh, so, closest to the end of is technology, all of a sudden. So they move. They can only move it at once, but they do get this landmark. And then three points for not being able to move it twice. They don't get these points, and they move back on technology. Okay. Right. So science is just proper building out. Military is just proper building out. I'm kind of inclined towards arts because of the masterpieces. I mean, technology is getting upgraded. Having an extra one, it's two more upgrades, isn't it, for the rest of the game? You're not looking at the right bit. I haven't pressed the right button. An extra technology upgrade. It has to be a, the the little symbol is it has to be a different technology than the one you get with your normal upgrade. You can't just upgrade one from the bottom to the top in the same income phase. Or this, we've moved seven spaces. That's 14 points, isn't it, by the end of the game? And we're probably going to move up science a bit more. That's just for moving one up the arts track. We can have that. Oh, as well, we have got that technology that wants a landmark on it. So getting landmarks wouldn't be bad there either. Or we could draw from the top of the deck, couldn't we? If we, if we don't particularly like them. I think... Spend a food... Spend a food? Spend a food. Go up the arts track. I'm going to get motion picture. Point for every movement on the science track. And we reveal tapestry. A masterpiece. Uh, that's get an extra tapestry card and resource every income phase. Okay. Bot is gonna... Suppose epic poetry is a point for every tile you've got and a point for every technology. That's not too bad. And the landmark's still there. Not a bad thing, really. What's Bot doing, though? So they are having an income phase because their deck is now empty and the hand is showing. So are they... Is someone in front of them on their favourite track? No. It's in front of them, isn't it? They have they were in front. They've, they've regressed on that track a load. Um, yeah, are they at the end or are they less advanced than someone else? No, they're not. So they keep their favourite. They advance according to that last card that, again, I've discarded. And it was... Track they haven't finished, top priority science. So they move up there and they get to roll and move but don't get the benefit in arts. Okay. Then civilization bonus, they don't have one. Points. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven landmarks. And three territories. So 10 points times 2 multiplier, 20 points. Yeah, I think I've done that spread out too much thing again. Then a point for every red and green track marker. That's only 2, 3, 4, 5 movement now. They've moved back on those quite a bit. And then 2 points for every other track movement. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18... 20, 22, 24, 26. Where were they there? There. 26 more. So, is that 112? Pop one on the 100. <laughs> I'm laughing. They are, they're one income phase ahead, aren't they? Um, two new pairs. This is income phase four for them, isn't it? Two new pairs and... Tapestry card from the deck goes on their thing. Oh, they get four points for... Oh, they get four points for being the first to this income phase. 
so 116. And then a new tapestry card in the pile of tons and reshuffle it all up. That's they get one more income phase that finishes their game. They've got a lot of cards in here now though. So many turns added. Can we catch up? We've still got plenty of resources. So Hey Rory, how's it going? One of your favourites. Have you got the new expansion? I'm liking the psionics. Uh, I'm not. I don't think I'm doing them justice, but I'm liking them. Right. I think we've got to just try and focus on science, haven't we? One, two, three. Get this building out and get a point for every one that you've put out. Let's pop that there for another row. And one, two, three, four points. I say it's been it's we're saying this at the start, it's but it's been quite a while since I played it multiplayer. I remember really liking it. Probably see my like when I originally did the playthrough. I probably talk about it in the first impressions, I hope I did. But I really like it solo. I, I really like Autumn Factory though. They're great for a bot that, as much as I like the involved bots that really go for making it feel like you're playing against the actual player multiplayer, in Ultimate Factory I've got the perfect balance between simplicity and still giving you some kind of challenge. I went up size, I did that, I had those points. That's that's it. Bot. So track they aren't at the end of, starting with technology. So they move one. They don't get those points. They can't move anymore because I'm behind them. So they get... Is it, it's three points, isn't it? So I forgot that. Yeah, three points. And they move back on military. Can we afford... We can't afford science again. I've only got one other resource. We can afford technology. That would be a point and put a yellow building out. I don't think we could get a row stroke column from doing it. But we could do arts. That would be point for every tile would be three point for every technology would be four so seven points and a landmark which we could either oh, there's reeds there which is annoying but we could pop those there that's another column which is another three points we could pop it on the technology and this would let us move up science maybe at the very end And we could inspire next on that track. It's a bit late again, but you could you could then change like the the market track. So instead of being its default side, like you could make it earn you more points. Point for every tile you've got fifteen points at the end. Is it the same on both sides? It is, yeah. We are just worth more there. Extra points in income. You could choose any of the things when you get inspiration. And that extra science movement might be vital at the very end. Rubbish if we already got there. We get a technology though. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have the resources for it. Or just an income turn and try and do more science the normal way. So it doesn't need a landmark on it. To get the right to the top. Income. What? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get a technology in a minute, actually. Right. 
income phase. So first of all, we get a point for every science we've moved up. Three, six, eight. Then it's income turn four, so I get a technology card. I'd kind of like these to change. So I think I'd like to take one of them instead of the... No, I'm actually fine with them. Let's take something from the mystery door. So three points. A landmark. You have to have writing, which we've got. That's... I've unlocked there. Or explore anywhere. And then roll the die when it gets to the top. I think that's better. I don't know if we're going to get any of these actually up. But, uh, yeah, I like that one better. So I'm gonna... So that's my Civilization cards thing. Then play a Tapestry card. So I could either draw three space cards, put one under my mat, and at the end of the game, in Income Phase 5, I could explore it, or discard it and put an Inspiration down instead. That's tempting. And then... Do you play a tapestry? You don't play a tapestry card in five, do you? So nothing's going to get on the end of this now, unfortunately. I don't think. I would still get to do that thing, but the charm thing would never kick off. I think technomancy. I'm going to gain the circle benefit of two of the three available cards, and I just think a red building. I'm pretty sure I can't get a row or column out of it but we can get a bit closer put something on the reeds do not invent them just uh just leave them where they are and just a resource we'll go for population just because we're likely to need that for science so that's the tapestry card upgrade attack a tech card point for every one of them is kind of nice i'm thinking just explore though and maybe for its next upgrade we do the die for the last income phase. So explore anywhere, just because it could get me something. Oh, it's have both. It's get a tile, and then is it explore with that tile anywhere? So I get to draw two and pick one. It's culture either way. But uh, we could pop it here. Then you got mountains on? No. Has to be somewhere adjacent to me. So we could pop it there and get one, two, three points and a culture it's all right in it something but i'm more bothered about the the die roll later so i haven't got great things on me technologies unfortunately i could have picked those and then something else would have come out but i knew i wanted the building thing from the gain that benefit right so i've upgraded a tech card and then points so point for every technology is five Three points for every row or column. So I think I have done one, two columns and one, two rows. It's not very good, is it? I do get the points three times, though. So that is 12 points. I've got so many spaces filled, but I left gaps and done it in a rubbish way. Four more points there and two points for every conquered territory. I've got the two that I've had for ages. Then, income from your resource tracks, I get two of that, one, two, three, four of that, three food, and two culture. I think that's that. Bot, having their second turn. So closest to the landmark or the end. The two off the end, two off the landmark. Yeah, so technology or arts. First one to come up is technology. They only get to move one. They ignore all of these symbols. They get three points because they weren't allowed to move. Their full potential. But they move back on arts. Then. Me. We need to do some science, don't we? But I think I'd like to do technology first. So it's coin and something else. Point for every red building. It's just two. Or do we do military first and get that red building? So we get an extra point and there's another building out. Okay, talk me around. Military. Just spend a culture for it. 
because I do want the buildings out as well. I want to do the rows and the columns and stuff, don't I? So that's it's getting knocked over. That will be another row. That'll be another column, and if I can get a landmark or something, that'll be another row. So that's that done. Bok. Will. Oh, I haven't had a, a tile. Not that it really matters. From me and come. And a tapestry card. Just interrupting the bot's turn. Engineering. This era, whenever... Oh, it's going to be the last era. When played, invent a technology and choose any of your technologies and upgrade it. Or get an existing... Like, upgrade a technology or get the circle benefit of a technology again. We'll go for that, I think. Bot. So, any track it isn't at the end of. Technology is the top of that list. Moves once. It can't move twice because it's two in front of me. But does it get the points? Because it couldn't go two up here anyway. I'm going to say it doesn't. But what do you reckon? What is that AI singularity? I'm, I'm assuming they don't get that. That's put, a, that's put a marker on another track, isn't it? And be going up it again. I don't think they get that. That's surely not in their benefit table. No, it's definitely not. They are at the end of the track, though, so they get 10 points for being the first to the end of a track. And now I'll go up technology. Food, and why not a culture? Point for every one of these is three. And then put a yellow out. Hmm. Then we'll do that. That's a column. With my with how I've gone. I can't have a technology card though. That's a point. And it could be something worth upgrading. Well, we want to upgrade that, don't we? And just get the movement somewhere. No, I don't think I'll pay for a technology card. Bot. Any track is not at the end of. Arts is its top priority, so it's going to move. Get nothing and refresh the Masterpiece display. So we've got some new choices up there. And then it moves back. Oh, did it move back last time? It should have moved back on arts. So it shouldn't have done that. Oh, well, I've done it now. And this time it moves back on science. Yeah, I didn't regress it, did I? Okay. Right, so technology gets me two more technologies. We've got to concentrate on science, haven't we? Let's do population and food and a culture. Have I not done this already? No, I haven't moved it, have I? So I can either move up military, get a resource, and a point for every tile. I have got four tiles now. Exploration would be a point for every conquest. No, I think we've got to do technology. Wipe the display and get two technology cards. What is that? Duct tape. Move it. Upgrade a tech card twice or two tech cards once each, ignoring prerequisites. We could do that if we did the normal, if we did this, choose any of your technologies and upgrade it. And then we could use the main upgrade to get that to the top and upgrade two more technologies. That's a landmark and it's tempting, but surely this is going to result in more stuff. I'm going to take that. And a roll with no benefits and five points. Oh, I get two technologies. I'm, I'm not going to get like all of the benefits of the other things. When do I refresh the display? When do I refill the display? Should I have seen that penicillin? You can upgrade one twice, can't you? Like, I could get that landmark. Oh, we just put a... Hmm. 
moving over to track and not getting the benefit. Or if we just got the five points, that'd be worth it, I think. Go for that. Right. Done. Bot. Plenty of cards left. Track they're not at the end of. Art. So they go here and wipe the display, but I've already done that. And then they get the clock tower away from me. Over there. Okay, we need to go science again, don't we? Which now is just two population. Oh, I'm going to be short, aren't we? I can get one there if it really comes to it. So we get a landmark that we're going to have to kind of poke on the edge of things. But that's another column and two rows done for the late scoring. And I can regress. Oh, regress. On technology or military. Hmm. Let's undo that. What if I moved forward in technology first? I could get this, which would let me upgrade. Can I afford to be doing that? I don't want to regress on military, though, and get that benefit, really. What if we go forward on technology first? That culture food. Put that house out, get a point for everyone, which is three. There's another column three points can i afford this pay another resource upgrade a technology and there's that remote viewing done we can have it we've got a charm card we've got a charm tapestry so as a one-off we can go up a track and if that's science that would solve a ton of problems we can roll this twice Arts would be pretty rubbish. Technology, still good, still good. So we could do that again. Right, this is upgraded tech card and get the circle benefit of something that's in the middle, right? So, upgrade something. Let's get a population. That sorts out our science woes because they're two population each. We've now got six population. And then we could either get another one or pop that building out. That's 10 points. Do I want the building? Do I want the resource? The resource isn't going to let me do a whole lot, is it? We're going to get to do it again. Oh, we are. Let's put the building out. And... Yeah. There's another row. What's that from? Yeah, that's from that. But... I feel like catching up might still be an impossibility, but... We'll see. Track they're not at the end of. Science is their priority. So roll a die. Move up, don't get the benefit. Arts. And another one. Get a tapestry card. And then move back on exploration. Now, science. Now we get the card. The the this thing in my hand. Oh I could put a I could put a Probably wouldn't, but I could put a landmark there. No, leave it where it is. Forget landmarks. Put it there. That's a district full. We can have something. I don't know that's going to make a difference. But I'll put it on the tech. What would we get? We get a science card, a, a space card, space tile. I'm going to try and fill these up. 
So go back. Now going back is putting another one of these out. Yeah, have it. Have it there, and then you can put that there, and you could have another food. Coin. Yeah. Yeah. It's not another royal column, though. It's close to food. Because we're going back, and we can pay a resource to upgrade a technology again. Oh, landmark on that corner. I see. I'm thinking this stupid space one. No, you're right, you're right, you're right. Which maybe we can put those things down there. I don't know if I'll get another landmark now. That's one less resource that you should have. But yeah, I might pop both of those down there. So I'm not getting another landmark, am I? Because then we can do that as the upgrade, which gets us a science movement now, which is military or tech or exploration, and we'll surely go for tech and get another upgrade and then get the benefit of something in the middle. But we can't do that now, so we want to upgrade something that we want the benefit of. Maybe I should have left that. Oh no, because it's given us the science thing. Upgrade that, because that's going to let you do loads more technology. I need more technologies. Shockingly. Oh, make sure flip that card, because it's single use. And that gives us a culture that I'm probably not going to be able to use. Right. And that's that. How do I get one of these? I think you can't. Oh, exploring. Instead of that, I do want that to be up. Instead of that, we'll explore instead. Because I have got a tile that will give me a coin. I've only got one more place. Oh, I've got two more places I could explore, actually. So I could put that there, and that lines up with one, two, three, four sides on it, line up with things. And I get the thing. Which bump do you mean, Skycroft? Oh, do you mean the circle activation? Second bump as well. Which second bump? Do you mean like I can activate a circle again? So I've upgraded one, now I can have a circle. I'm going to go for space. Because I want to have a space one if I'm going to get the benefit of it at the end. So I choose two and pick them. So that's a landmark. That's five points for something. What do the space ones mean? Is it five points if you've gotten to the end of the track or something? I forget. Where's the exploration bit? Oh, it's whenever you advance on that track, get five points. Well, there's going to be no time for that, so I'll get the one that would give me a landmark. Right. Have I done the bump? Have I caught up on it? Let me know if, I'm, if I've misunderstood. Five points for every move up on Conquer. Miss Skids. Your science track gave you two advances. Did you give us two advances? Forget Automa. Ooh. I think it's, it's still got to be tech, hasn't it? So a point for every military is rubbish. That's three. But a point for every science is 11. So 14, 97. Oh, I don't want to say we're clawing it back because I don't think we are. But, all right, now Automa. Track they're not at the end of priority exploration. So exploration and they get to explore. Don't waste my time, bot. There's stuff happening. I need to catch up with you. So they don't get anything, do they? For exploring, I don't think. Much more opportunities, I suppose. So they, they have done the Middle Island, so their tiebreaker is... Their favourite is military, so they're not going to try and be furthest from me. But there's no other tiebreaker, so I suppose I'll use the thing. It's starting down from here. 
So the first valid space that's next to somewhere they've been is there. Random tar goes out. And they do it again. Random tar goes out. Same criteria, so the new tar would go up there. And they go back on technology. Okay. Right. Has he been having a stretch? Or has he just been asleep? Right, so we can now... This lets us move up and get the bonus of the top thing again, which can be a science movement for free. I don't know if that particularly helps us. Because I can afford the science. Square thing could be put another tapestry card out. I could do that again. Give up three technology cards for ten points. I don't think that's worth doing. Just a little circle. Now I wish I hadn't blocked these spaces up from uh, Landmark. Let's just do the science thing and see what we get. So the last science space is roll the die four times. Does that let me roll twice each time? Or does it just let me roll five times and pick four of them? That's going to be hard to remember. I'm not really sure. Because it adds other effects that give an extra option. It doesn't give an extra option, does it? Because you're not rolling it four times and picking one. I think we get to roll it eight times. Okay. Right. For the first movement, we can either go up tech for free, not get the benefit. We can move up it. Or science. If we pick science, we get five points. And we do get five points for being at the end of a track. So I'm on 103 now. So science. Boom. Second. It is either science, so five points, or technology. I kind of like that space. I wouldn't get to the end, but I don't think I'd get a... I suppose that if we got to the end, we'd put a new thing out, and I get one of each resource which could move me up some other things but I would miss out on upgrading a technology and getting the top bit maybe I've done this at a bad time I'm going to go science again third roll exploration or exploration <laughs> exploration then don't get the benefits and finally the fourth roll either technology or arts now arts that would be quite nice because i would still get three six ten points for that space but the one after the inspire plus maybe a masterpiece that might be better if i end up doing that with leftover stuff because now i've got i'm not going to have leftover stuff maybe i will i don't think i am right any more buildings, really. So that's that. But their deck hasn't run out yet. Any track they're not at the end of. Priority, priority military. Get a tapestry card. Do a conquest. Oh, taking my time up. Right. Conquest. They can conquer me, can't they? Because they're next to me. So they're going to conquer me. There's no tiebreaker because there's only one place that they can conquer. They knock mine over. They now control that outpost, and that's that. They get points if they topple two of mine, but they're not going to get to do that. I've got no opportunity. I can't take that back because there's two things there now. That's it for them, and they regress on arts. So, for me, I could go up there twice. So the... the the masterpiece with arrows in it is use the benefit of one of your masterpiece cards. So I could get 12 points for that space, or put another house out. 
But I think we need to go up here, don't we? If I go up here, though, I can't progress anywhere again. I've only got two more resources, and they're useless. No, I might have stuff to do. All right, let's do this. Nanotechnology. And upgrade something. I'll upgrade the duct tape for the resource and get the square benefit. I'm going to play a tapestry card. I'm going to play Information Age on, over the top of this. Or do, I want, or do I want another space card that I'll get in Income 5? Let's invent another technology and then do an upgrade or get the benefit of something in the middle. It's tough because I can I can upgrade something right to the top. But I want that to go to the top. No, yeah, I need to. I need to do an upgrade. Yeah, I need to do an upgrade. Yeah, I can do duct tape at the very end. But if I want this space card to go out and to get that thing, I need to do information age. So I can invent something new. Maybe I'll get a building out of this. Because my main upgrade's got to be that, hasn't it? So I can either get something from the middle, get a different space tile or another resource, and then I can go up here twice. I think we move this up, get five points now, and then my upgrade in the income phase is going to be this, and then upgrade both of these to get the space card out and another landmark. Five points is five points, isn't it? I mean, not much of a gulf now. I get an income phase as well as them. Okay, that was all four. Oh, that was just, that was pain to do that, wasn't it? I'm unfortunately not going to get to the end. Bot may be doing an income phase. They're not. So track they're not at the end of. A track they're closest to the end of. Mm, they're the same. They're the same. It's either science or arts. First one is science. So roll the die and move up and get the benefit of science. <laughs> there's, there's still another movement after this. Roll the die and get the benefit of exploration. Put a tile out. Tile, according to their thing, is going to be first place that's adjacent is there. And then one more science. They don't care about that. Tech. Oh, they're not at the end of tech anymore, are they? Take all of that back. You're right. I forgot they, they came back from the end of tech, don't they? So they go one, but I don't think I get the penalty that they can't do another one, because they're at the end, aren't they? Red, green, no. I've, see, I've seen it. I think I've seen it. Um, I've heard it referenced when... Um, because we talk about a red-green a lot on Taskmaster, which is an English thing. But I think Canadian people that watch it and have commented about it say something about a red-green show. Their favourite thing they move back on, they go there, and then they're going to win come next time. We can move up the... Is there anything better? Three points and a resource isn't going to stand out very much. A building and a new tile isn't going to stand out very much either. The tile can't fill a district and get me something lovely. So I think it's going to be Inspire on here. And I can pay this last resource to get another thing. Ooh, 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 ooh. Tile and a resource. Uh, house and a resource. You may gain this benefit only once. 
Point for every conquered and a resource. Well, the thing that lets me put a house out, I guess. Or I could pick two from the top. Yes. So it's a point for every exploration or resources equals arts. Not really sure. Uh, that's, that's just going to be like five points then, isn't it? I suppose it's something. Yeah, I think the house might have been better. I don't know. And I can also inspire. So we could change. What's this going to do? If I change this around, I don't think I'm going to get that house out. So that's going to stay as it is. I would just gain a point, three points from upgrading that. That's not very good. This, I would upgrade and get five, eight, ten more points. That's a contender. This one, I would upgrade and get two, three, four, five, nine, ten more points. Is that as many? What did I say here? Ten again, isn't it? So that's ten points. I could potentially get one of those out, but I think it would be a waste. And then this one would be five, seven more points. I think we just do this one. We're not going to get that building out, I don't think. Right. That's the Inspire that we've done. Again, nice to do a lot of these things earlier, but I didn't. That's the turn, isn't it? Bot is having their final income turn. So change their favorite track. Yes, I'm ahead of them on their favorite track. And I have gotten rid of the um, card. So, closest to the end of, it's science, isn't it? Becomes their new favourite. And then move according to the card, closest to the end of science. So, one, and roll the die. And move up technology, which they can't. Ha! And then, civilization bonus, there isn't one. Points. So, this is going to be three points for every landmark. And red tile, two points for every science and military movement, three points for every other movement, which is going to be beyond crushing, I think. So landmark, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and four territories. So 12 times three is 36. So 68 there. They have moved up two Three, four, five, six, seven spaces times two is 14 points. And then they've moved up the full 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 times three. So it's that 57. It's that 239 now, I think. They've lapped me. Yeah. And then... They don't get more cards because it's the end. Everything else, it's the end. They don't get stuff. So that is their final score. For me, I've got no resources, so I must income. So first of all, I get the points for this. It's 12 points for science. And then five points for exploration. I get to roll and move up a track and get the benefit as my last thing. Either military, it's something, or science, which is not something. So I suppose military. Yeah, arts would have been lovely. Have to choose science again. Arts would have been the one I really wanted. Okay then. So we moved up there. We get that resource. Resources don't count for anything at the end, do they? I don't think they do. And I get a point for every tile I've got, which is three. It's not zero. Then, yep, then what? Tapestry card. I've only got one tapestry card. We don't play those in round five. Upgrade a tech card. So I'm going to upgrade this tech card that is going to let me have two more tech card upgrades. I'm going to upgrade this one that gives me a monolith. What's that look like? Is it this? I think it's this. I think I am going to take the two, the five point hit and put it there because that's two rows and a column. Oh no, it's not. It's just two rows. Is that worth it? No, it's not worth losing five points to... Well, you're losing eight points because you'd gain three if it was on your 
board and it didn't go over a read. And then maybe I put the things out in a bad place. If it made rows and columns as well, it would definitely be worth it. So I suppose we might not put the stock market out. I was going to do the stock market as the other thing, but I can't use that landmark. So do you know what I think is a better thing to do? Than upgrading this at all. Is to just put this up to the top. Because I can upgrade the same thing twice. Because upgrading this will just get you seven points. And it will still do the row and column that that was going to do. But it will give me another seven points of income. Is I think the move. All that effort, I didn't need the space thing. I suppose the, the landmark would be worth three points, wouldn't it? Seven's better. Yep, stick with that. Then, points on your income, Matt. Three points for every technology. We have got three, six, eight technologies. So, what did I say? Three points for it. 24? 62? Also get a square benefit. That's just, um, that's ignore the requirements. So you can upgrade things twice and ignore the requirement of any of them. Would have been good to ignore the requirement of putting a landmark on there, actually, wouldn't it? But I needed it to get to the science things. It's fine. I suppose that... I can't upgrade it, though. It's not being a square thing. I could have had eight points, actually. If I leave that where it is... And just have that as an upgrade. Get the monolith. That's going to be worth three points. And then we can put that up to the top. Point for every one of these, which is five. That's going to be eight points rather than seven. So I should already have those five points. So that's the technology cards. Three points for every row and column. So I think... Oh, it's easier looking over here, isn't it? I've got three, four columns. No six columns and three four five rows so 11 times three things so that's another 33 so that's 200 with 39 behind is it possible 17 straight points plus three for tiles so that's another 20 <gasps> that Oh, no, I think we're I think we're just short. Then four from here. It's putting me on two hundred and twenty-four, and then I think it's just a point for. Oh no no no! It isn't. It's a it's it's a point for every conquered tile. I only have one conquered tile now. But then is this gonna do it? Not forgetting, at the end of the game, lose five points for every landmark that is on reeds. So you can tell because it would be orthogonally adjacent to a Will-o'-the-Wisp, which I don't think I've done at all. Gain three points for every landmark that is not adjacent. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen points. Is that enough? That's enough. That is very close. Level three is clearly my difficulty range. If everything was done correctly, what happened? Not bothered, I'm gonna take the win. I'll take I'll take a slight victory or defeat over the hundred plus point loss that I got last time. I think we just managed it against the level three erratics. There we go. I really I really like the expansion, John. Like it's not like a major thing, really, is well it, it's like adding more variety, isn't it? It's there's new types of cards and stuff. It's nice having these charm things. So when you play a tapestry card or when you play that tapestry card. You get like nice chains if you can get a couple of charm cards like next to each other as well. You can get big bonuses on the tapestry cards, especially if it was a good one that you wanted to play anyway. It's cool having like that links into the new kind of technology card as well. That the requirement is you've either got to wait until turn five to upgrade this income turn five, or 
you have played a charm card so it's sometimes worth having these charm cards out we didn't get a lot out of a haunted house really out of my dreams early on for it but having that charm card out let me upgrade a couple of things that had that as a requirement so that was not a couple of things as well but i like the i like the sci-fi futuristic uh fantasy kind of theming of the stuff as well like the the other ones in here you've got the celestials the elder ones the fey folk there's some that don't work in solo like uh the anything that involves an opponent like the the genies at the start of the game get a player token from each opponent on income turns two to four randomly draw one of these player tokens to choose an opponent that opponent chooses and scores one of the circle benefits so it could be the number of landmarks technology cards conquered territories or tiles you score the same benefit and gain a square benefit next to it. So roll a die, get a technology card, that kind of stuff. Uh, the Illuminati Strange, uh, another one that can't be played solo. You put the dice on here, and it says if you've got an extra set of dice, if you've bought extra dice for Tapestry, you can't play this um, civilization. You get all of the dice on your card. At the start of your income turns, you get six points for every die that is left on here. But when the when an opponent takes the conquest dice, because they've done a conquest, you get both of the benefits they roll as well. If an opponent takes the science die, you go up the track that they advanced on. And if nobody does those things in a round, because they don't want to give you the satisfaction, maybe, you get six points for every die that's left there. There's merfolk, there's wee folk, there's werefolk. There's loads and loads of different things, and... I don't think I've got this. Oh, yeah, the city cards. Oh, there's the artificers as well. Uh, at the start of every income turn, select an income track. You may set your leftmost building on that track aside, not in your city. Or if there's at least one empty space to the left, you can slide it over and change what is going to be available in your, your income and stuff. But you could be in the netherworld where you want to put a link from your city in the middle to these um, imps to defeat them. Uh, there's Polar, where you want to cover up these bits on the magnetic field for bonuses. There's Veil, where you've got to start out covering things over here on the worldly side of the Veil. And then when you've covered uh, each of the districts on this side, you get access to the Pocket Universe districts on this side that can give you, rather than just standard get a resource building in the district, get a technology card, get a die advancement, get a building of your choice, like... There can be huge things on there, but like there's there's so much variety in all of the stuff that's on there as well. It's a really cool one. I think the fifth board helps equalize the tracks. To instance, players usually focus on exploration for the space tiles and get a lot of bonus points. I, I'm not as well versed. Like as, as, as I was saying earlier, that I've only really played it base game multiplayer. I've only re really played it solo since then. But I think that it is like it's another thing spreading it all out, isn't it? Especially if you're playing it at high player counts. And towards its end, it does start rewarding you with movement up the other tracks as well, like uh, the, the science track does. But having these, like, like any track, I suppose military is a bit more... You have to pair it with exploration a bit if you're the only person going military. But you can get massive rewards out of um, doing it, especially if you're getting all of the points for having your conquered territories. But if you can get a couple of these masterpieces early, they will trigger in every income phase. And like the points ones aren't going to be massive for you until later on, but ones that get you extra resources or like the extra building only pops off once, but yeah, extra, extra resources plus extra scoring opportunities or extra upgrades, a free conquest in an empty territory, like getting that as extra income before anything else kicks off could be massive for you. And this one over here lets you, so this one lets you reuse the benefit of one that you've already got. This one at the end is use three benefits of these cards that either you or anyone or your neighbors have not anyone else your neighbors are there usually neighbors is everyone for me it's one or one or two players but yeah i think it's a it's another great addition like that's that's probably my favorite of the expansions in the arts track but i like that being represented as well and it's like oh we can try and go for it's not an arts victory is it but it's like that uh, that sieve thing of adding extra routes to victory on top of the the main tracks. But there we go. That is it. Like I'm not saying Tapestry will never get another playthrough, but in terms of expansions, for now anyway, for the 
foreseeable future, that is the end of the, the Tapestry Trilogy. But there is, like, there is a box bursting full of stuff for this game. Like, even if you're just playing solo, like, the auto will behave differently every time because of the different cards that they start with and that. There's still harder difficulties to go on. Like, there's still level 4 where they would get more stuff, they would get more cards added, which is more turns every time. Uh, there's a difference to how they go here. But there's another side of the board that's the hard size, so they'll score more and more. Uh, and they can play a different civilization every time as well. Like, these were the erratics, so we ignored the Shadow Empire, and they got to move two every time, but back on another one. So it was strange that, like, you could get in front of them on some things to get some of the monuments away from them, because they were constantly, like, jumping up one and jumping back on another one. It was really cool. But yeah, they've got all of those different, and you can play with scenarios that have been written. Like, the last two, this expansion and the one before, added a load of um, scenarios you can play as a little mini uh, story. There's two new scenarios in this. The first scenario, I don't know if it sounds like I would like it, uh, the, the game is, like, destroying landmarks and stuff that you've earned, which is a, a pretty big change for it. But yeah, there's, there's so much stuff. It's lovely. So there we go. Yeah, if you'd like to see more Tapestry as well, it, it will... <laughs> you could watch them in reverse order. You could time travel for it, your way through it and see expansions get removed from it bit by bit. But yeah, I've got, I've got um, playthroughs for the original game and each expansion as they came out added to the whole thing each time. It doesn't tell you how well you did based on your score. You just, you're just you trying to beat the Automa is the, the whole goal of it. But yeah, there's, there's so much like once you find yourself comfortable... And it's always going to make a difference like... There's still random factors in it, isn't there? Where, like, the tapestry cards, the technologies, all this, the dice rolling, all of that's going to, like, affect your performance to some degree. But yeah, there's plenty of scope to... This is this was level three as well. So if it's too hard, you can step it all the way down to level one. If it's too easy, there's plenty of space to go up and then add the personalities, the scenarios, all of that stuff. This, this was everything together. So yeah, the... I can't remember what the first expansion added. It added loads of landmarks more cards of all types the the last expansion was all what did the first expansion add i think it was just like a a new a, a big variety of stuff right the second expansion big thing was the arts track and the masterpieces and stuff and this is like more stuff again but yeah the all futuristic and fantasy themed and no like landmarks and stuff this time first one was more buildings yeah, but that, that is everything. This is the complete tapestry for now, anyway. Hey, who knows what this will look like in future? I'll be completely wrong. Thank you, everyone, so much for being here. Uh, I'll be back on... I don't know. Well, I'll be back on Sunday, and it will be the finale of Arkham Hor of uh, Eldritch Horror and see what if Antediluvium is going to awake. Will we defeat them? Who knows? There's a new episode of that coming out, and, uh, yeah, there'll be a new episode of uh, Story Sundays coming up on patreon as well and then there'll be more live things and stuff next week but i think the pokes the pokes might end up being tuesday we'll see how it goes because it's, it's bank holiday i'm doing something but uh yeah the pokes might be up on monday it may be tuesday next week but i'll let you all know what's happening there might be a vote as well it's may isn't it there's a vote coming up sort out what's going to be on that hey plenty of stuff coming up if you'd like to support the channel uh, and uh, yeah you can vote on that thing that's coming up on tuesday at the patreon.com slash slipperips if you'd just like to give us a tip or something then uh, ko-fi is perfect for that they're linked in the description support would be massively appreciated this is how i'm able to do this uh, it is may day i think is the bank holiday yes the first monday in may is a bank holiday over here yeah, just just may day i don't know the reason for it it's may day but yeah, there we go. Thank you everyone for being here and uh, I'll see you very soon. I'll see you on Sunday in uh, pre-recorded form anyway. Thank you for watching and for helping out and for chatting and effort. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all very soon. Bye, 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 bye.